This video is sponsored by Brooklinen. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. I'm Alexandra and you are watching Studio Fix, the series where I tackle teeny tiny apartments under 500 square feet and show you how to make them beautiful, stylish, and organized. <gasps> you got a makeover to do, so. <laughs> Carla, are you ready? In today's episode of Studio Fix, we are tackling the tiniest space I have ever made over on this channel. It's 211 square feet. We are doing an industrial style. You guys love the industrial, dark and moody vibe. So sit back, get ready, let's get started. If you've ever wondered how you would have your space made over by myself and my team, we exclusively do callouts for makeovers over on Instagram. So make sure you're following me there. For this particular space, James got in touch with us to nominate his friend Austin for a complete studio refresh. Hi Team AG, my name is James and I'm gonna nominate my good friend Austin for your Studio Fix Makeover. He is such a great guy and has been living in his studio for about five years now, but hasn't had the opportunity to make it his own or add any personality at all. There is no art or paint on the walls. It's a pretty small space, but right in the heart of downtown Toronto. But I have no doubt that Alexandra is gonna work her magic and I can't wait to see what she does. The thing that I really love about Austin's space is that one, it's super, super tiny, so it's a great challenge for us. But also, as James mentioned, Austin hasn't made over his space in the five years that he's been living there. It's an eclectic mix of mismatched furniture, hand-me-down furniture. It doesn't really feel like his own space. And if you've been following me for a while, you know that's what I do what I do. I want people to feel like they are living in the best homes that they can possibly be living in, even if they rent or or live in a tiny, tiny space. I am going to hop on a call with Austin. I wanna to get to know him, what he needs to use the space for before I start planning. How's it going? Good, I'm excited. <laughs> Good, I'm so glad to hear it. We are also very, very excited. To start, your friend James nominated you, which is so mm -hmm. nice. And one thing he said, which I wanted to chat to you a little bit about, is that you have been living in your space for five years and mm -hmm you have had all the same furniture you also haven't really had the chance to like bring in your own style into your space exactly yeah it's a really common experience that people have they move into a space and then it's five years later and they're like wow this space doesn't actually feel like me at all when i moved in the apartment i got it when the rent was relatively cheap but i didn't have like a, a job that could support me to purchase all this beautiful furniture yeah so kind of just like became a habit just to put that in the back of my mind and, and focus on life at hand it feels like a place i'm staying at the fact that you don't feel like you walk into your door every day and you're like, this is my home is, mm -hmm. that's what we wanna change. So that leads me into your inspo photos. I loved the inspo you submitted. Mm -hmm. Very industrial, very warm. Can you talk me through what your vision for the space is? Well, personally, I just like, I like things with like a modern twist or just some special edge to it. So I'm fine with simple designs, but it has to have that you know, unique flair to it. I work from home as well to separate those two things and create like a, a safe space and to just unwind is definitely like a huge uh, want for me. When I came to scout the space, I noticed that you don't have a ton of stuff. Like you actually mm -hmm. utilize the space really well. You're not like bursting at the seams with, you know, stuff that you don't need. Can you walk me through the things you do use your space for? Well, it's funny I just like say, first had a lot of stuff in here <laughs> and then I was like oh this place is getting really small and cramped so it made me realize what I actually needed and didn't need it. I also do like lots of arts and crafts of teaching myself sewing awesome. so having a place to have like a little area to use all my sewing equipment would be yeah. just like uh, my main goal. And you also mentioned when we scouted that you kind of want a fresh start like you're getting rid of a lot of your furniture and I would love to just like hear your thought process behind that because I think you're like ready to accept sure. the new. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, well, I didn't expect myself to, to stay here so long as times are changing and I realized like my location is great, my rent is great. Why would I want to leave that? I guess I'm one of those people who like just clear all the old stuff and, and bring all the new. I'm very particular with energies and, and things that stay in the house. And I think that's a great way just to like 
get rid of things you didn't know you needed or to keep things you, you really appreciated. I love that. I think the exact same way. So I'm so excited that we get to do this for you. <laughs> Me too. So I feel like I have all the things I need to kind of get started on the plan. I'm so excited. Amazing. Thanks, Austin. Have a great day. Bye. Bye. Hi, guys. Um, we just got back from Austin's. We did lots of measuring. We went through our plan. Elena and Graham had gone before without me, but because this space is so tiny, I wanted to see it for myself so that I could really get a sense of what the flow was gonna be like. Even though it's such a tiny space, I think we have come up with so many functional solutions to make it work for Austin. I also wanna be transparent and say that the plan changed, which happens so often when you're designing a space. We were originally gonna do a Murphy bed, but because there is that tiny window in the corner, we didn't want to block it. And I just felt like a Murphy bed was going to take up way too much space and like jut out of the wall. This is so normal, even in your own spaces, you guys, to change things up and go back and forth. That's how you really come to a solid plan. Thanks for coming to my TED talk. <laughs> um, okay, Elena's driving. That's it for now. Over and out, people. Over and out. Here's what I know for sure. This air conditioner is in the middle of this tiny wall, not even by the window, and it makes setting up this space such a challenge. Right now, Austin has this tiny kitchen table, which he works off of, he crafts off of, he eats dinner off of, and it's really just not functional for a healthy work-life balance. The length of Austin's bed also takes up basically the entire width of the room. He has a chest at the end of the bed and his TV's on that, but it all just feels a little bit cramped. And I honestly think that we can make this studio apartment feel 10 times bigger than it does right now. And here's how. The first thing I'm gonna do is pivot Austin's bed so it sits vertically rather than... It was like this? No, it was like this. Pivot at 90 degrees, okay. The first thing I'm gonna do is pivot Austin's bed 90 degrees. That's gonna give us a lot more room on the right side of his bed. I'm going to enlist Graham to build a custom air conditioner cover, which is also going to act as a side table. So I'm thinking we add a door, maybe some cane webbing so it lets the air flow through the apartment, but this definitely needs to be covered somehow. Then I'm thinking we mount the television on the wall to save floor space and add in a Murphy table situation. Graham had the awesome idea to do three different leaves of the table so that Austin can really have a designated space for each thing that he uses apartment for a workspace, a craft area, and a dining space as well. One thing we have on our side is that Austin is truly a minimalist. He only has the things he needs and he is actually clearing out his entire apartment, like a purge, an edit, before we show up. Of course though, he does need storage. So I'm thinking we grab him a new bed with drawers that kind of pull out where he can store things underneath. I also want to create a little entryway. This little hallway is super, super dark and he has all of his shoes lined up on the floor. I wanna get him some concealed storage. I wanna bring in a mirror to brighten the whole narrow hallway up and make it feel industrial, but cozy. I want this studio apartment to be like a vibe, you know, a vibe. Accessories in this space are gonna be really important, which is why I'm bringing in some new Brooklinen bedding for Austin to really pull the space together and make it feel warm and cozy. Right now, Brooklinen is having its biggest sale of the year running until May 4th. Click my link in the description box to get 20% off Brooklinen items. This is such a great opportunity to snag some luxury bedding and you guys know I have Brooklinen in my own home. It's very cooling, I can attest to that. I've been using their bedding for six months now and I'm so impressed with the quality of my sleeps. Brooklinen makes luxury bedding at a fraction of the cost. Usually luxury sheets cost up to $500, but Brooklinen cuts that price almost in half. You guys know I love making spaces feel cozy and warm at an affordable price point. That's why I'm so excited to work with Brooklinen because that's also their philosophy as well. They also make the shopping experience so simple and seamless through their online website so you can shop from the comfort of your home. They have 20 plus colors and patterns to choose from and to mix and match. You can also see that their website has 80,000 plus five-star reviews, more than any other online bedding company. 
Brooklyn and Kindly sent Austin their classic hardcore sheet set bundle, which includes a core sheet set, extra pillowcases, and a duvet cover. They also sent linen sheets in a cream color, which I'm going to mix with the classic duvet cover on his bed to create a two-toned look. As I mentioned, Brooklinen is having their birthday sale. You can get 20% off Brooklinen items using the link in my description box below until May 4th. Atlanta and I are busy at the studio getting everything ready for Austin's makeover. Graham is DIYing away at his workshop on those custom pieces. Roll the Graham cam. To make this drop leaf table, Graham got a sheet of plywood and is cutting it into three equal sections. Each leaf is about three feet wide. We talked about having a shelf where Austin could keep things permanently like his sewing machine, some art, some desk accessories. So to create that shelf, Graham is doing one single cut at the top of the sheet of plywood. This shelf is also going to be the place where we install the hinges. So the drop leaf table is going to fold up and then down when he's not using it. Graham is also making custom brackets that are gonna swing out to support the weight of the table when it is up. For the AC unit, Graham is creating a box that is just a little bit wider and deeper than the air conditioner unit. And the idea is that we're just going to hang it right over the unit so it covers it. The key here though, is that we are also creating a door that is gonna be hinged on to the box so Austin can open it to access the AC unit and also where we can put some cane webbing so that it hides the unit but still lets the air flow in. Hi everyone. Coming live to you from Team AG's HQ. So we are working on a DIY for Austin's. We are going to upcycle an Ikea shoe cabinet for his entryway. We're working with a really tight space, so I feel like this product is perfect because it has a slim profile, but he can fit a ton of shoes in it. Here with Alana and Graham in his overalls. Hi. We love, we love. Woohoo! The first thing we did is sand the whole thing down. We wanted to sand off that glossy lacquer that you find on a lot of IKEA products. Next, we're using a primer. I will link the one we use down below. This is essential for IKEA furniture. If you don't, the paint is just going to chip off, so a primer is a must. Graham cut this piece of wood, so we had a decorative top. We are staining it English chestnut. and we are painting the whole thing this beautiful charcoal color. Before we do the second coat, I just wanna show you guys how smooth this is. Sanding and priming was obviously key, but yeah, the paint's going on so, so nicely. We are also adding legs. We spray painted them copper to tie into the rest of the space. It all flows and just works so well together. This is so great. Yeah, it's amazing. These are all so talented. Graham is heading over to Austin's today to get a head start on the makeover. He is painting the back wall, a charcoal color, one of my favorite colors from Benjamin Moore. It's called graphite. It's not a pure black. It has gray undertones. So it's like a softer option if you're looking for a dark accent wall. Hey guys, it's Graham here. I'm at Austin's place. It's day one of prep day and I'm so excited to be here. Take a look at the space. You might be at this point saying, why are you painting such a small space dark? I promise you that it's actually gonna feel really bright in here, but cozy at the same time. I'm kind of leaning into the fact that there's not a ton of light in this space. And this color is like the perfect way to make that happen. You don't wanna go with a pure black. That's gonna feel like it's like nighttime all the time in this apartment. You wanna go with like a soft gray. Graham is at Austin's prepping today. He just texted me and said, do you wanna do a little check-in? So I'm gonna call him and see where he's at with painting. 
Hi. Alexandra. <laughs> do you want to take a look? Yeah, I do. Okay. Ooh, it looks so good. It is beautiful. I was actually a little bit worried that it was going to feel too dark, but it, it still looks really bright in there. Yeah, it really is. You're thinking yeah. we should paint the pillar, right? Yeah, I think we should paint the pillar. It's like, it's kind of awkwardly there off to the left, just kind of bare. My thought was to just paint the side of the pillar, but I'm actually thinking we should paint the front too. When you walk into the apartment, yeah, just from the wall a little bit. Yeah, so. totally. And I was looking up online, this type of paint that we have, just a water-based latex paint, it can withstand temperatures up to 180 Fahrenheit. So you can paint radiators with it. Do we want to paint that radiator? I love that tip, and I think everyone watching should take in that tip. But no, only because Austin is renting, and I just, I worry about his landlord like not wanting it to be painted. Yeah, that makes sense. But I love that tip, knowing that you can actually paint this. I know, <laughs> you look at me every day. <laughs> You're also gonna paint the air conditioner unit as well? Yes, I've already started that. This is the first coat. Oh, it looks great. Oh my gosh, it looks so good. You have a busy day. <laughs> I do. Thanks, Graham. I will great. see you tomorrow. Okay, see you soon. Okay, bye. It is prep day. Oh, this is the perfect opportunity to show you that Team AG got a new uniform. <laughs> you guys, <laughs> it's kind of the best ever. Graham is in overalls. He will soon be getting a Team AG um, shirt as well because we're all gonna get little Team AG patches. I digress. This apartment is tiny. Like it, it looks even tinier without any of Austin's stuff in it somehow. I don't really know how that's possible, but here we are. Graham painted the wall yesterday. As you guys saw, it looks awesome. So as always, we're just gonna start unboxing things and uh, try and work around each other and all the stuff in here. <laughs> I'm excited for this piece because we are bringing in a lot of mirrors to this space because it is so small. Right? He's probably like, can I just do it myself? And I'm like, no. Strong independent woman. Thank you. That's not what I was thinking too. Ain't no man gonna tell me what to do. <laughs> just using him for his height, that's it. You could have done everything else. For help. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay. Are we laying it down? No. Beautiful. I really feel like this piece encapsulates like the whole. Say it again. Encapsulates. Encapsulates. I personally never heard that word. <laughs> Enca uh, Encapsulate Montague. <laughs> Encapsulates. That's not a word. You guys, I'm like really smart now. You don't even know. I really feel like this piece kind of sums up the whole style we're going for in this apartment. The warm woods, the leather. We have like aged brass here. It's so good. <laughs> Sorry, there's nowhere to go, guys. I literally have nowhere to go. I don't know how to do that. <laughs> Today we are attaching the door onto the AC unit and we are using decorative cane to finish it off. We don't have a bathtub here, so I'm just rinsing the cane underwater in the sink. This is actually doing the trick. It's not as soft as it would have been like soaking in a tub, but I think it'll do because we're only using a small amount of it. But let's get this air conditioner unit finished. We've gone for a really loose weave so that the air is able to flow through the entire space. We don't want to cover the AC unit. I mean, we want to cover it, but we still want to make sure it's functional, which is why we're going with this loose weave cane. Looks good, but we'll still let that air flow through. We're also adding a decorative knob so that Austin can actually open the door when he needs to access the unit. I haven't seen anyone do anything like this and I would love to know in the comments down below if you are going to implement this in your space because I am sure Austin can't be the only one with an air conditioner unit cramping their room style. Okay, so the box slides on like this. Like what the actual heck, I know. So this is gonna be his bedside table. 
please take a moment to freak out in the comments. Graham and I talked about maybe just having it so that he took the box on and off whenever he wanted to turn this on or off, but then we were like, that's really not practical or functional, especially when he's using it all the time in the summer. On really, really hot days, if he's finding like it's just not enough, he can just have the door open and let the air flow through. Though, truly, this should just be, this should be good enough. It works. It's cold. This is amazing, guys. So we are trying to figure out the height that we're gonna hang this drop leaf table. In my mind, I have the number 36. I think that's supposed to be the standard height of a desk. That's 36. Seems awfully high. Yeah, that's, that's high. Tall, yeah. 34. 34. That still feels high, hey? 32. I can Google it. Let's get an article height and an Ikea height. You should look at a sewing table height. 29. Article is 30. I feel like 30 might be a sweet spot. I think we, I think we go 30. This drop leaf table. We really like went all in for this. We were like, you have no table space. Don't worry, we're gonna give you three. We are securing the little shelf to the wall using concrete screws. So it's really secure. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that is solid. But like, you have to sit on it, right? Let's get that mm -hmm. foot off the. You always here? Yeah. Oh! Solid. <laughs> that is solid. Like solid. I was nervous, my heart's racing a little bit. <laughs> As always, we're working with a Toronto apartment that has tons of character, which basically means that nothing is straight. So we're kind of battling with a bowed wall situation, but once everything's installed, it should look pretty good. We are installing the drop leafs with continual hinges. These are really long hinges. I'll link the ones we use down below. We really went with a custom piece here because we wanted to make this as functional as possible, but there are tons of drop leafs on the market if you're not the DIYer type yourself. Okay, how's that? So good, Graham. Feels great. You always have to do the fake typing just in case, just, in case. <laughs> just to make sure. Okay, so this is the table up, obviously. We're gonna lift it a little bit, and then we're gonna swing the arm. We still need to put the brackets on these two, but look at all the table space that Austin has. This is crazy. Crazy. So much room for activities. It's making my head spin how many activities we can do. Let's get those last two brackets up. <laughs> <laughs> I thought you had it. <laughs> <laughs> Now we are mounting the TV on the wall. We are using a swivel mount. These are great for small spaces. Austin can move the TV depending on where he is in his studio. And it also comes off of the wall and then folds back into the wall as well. That was such a successful prep day. We got so much done. Ready for the reveal tomorrow. It's looking so good. I'll catch you in the morning. Hi guys. It's reveal day. I woke up so excited to complete this space. It's coming along so nicely. As you saw yesterday, we painted the wall. We did this awesome air conditioner cover that I'm like over the moon with. And we installed the drop leaf table. So first thing, I'm gonna sort out the cord situation over here. So it pops up like this. Like how genius. All of the cords have been mounted underneath here. You can actually mount your modem and a power bar just like a picture. So there's little keyholes here. There's a couple screws on the desk and then it just pops in just like that. So I'm gonna plug the television in into our nifty power bar. I'm just using a couple of cord covers. I love these. They just have a sticky back. And we're gonna pop one up here. And then you literally just feed the cord through it. Nice. Look at that cord management. Cord management. That looks sleek. So I wanted to show you this drop leaf table situation in all its glory. So the idea here is that Austin can really have three separate stations. So in the end here, we're gonna have his sewing machine set up. This is where his TV is. In the middle, he can use this as his office. And then the last table, we are gonna set it up as like a little dining table for him. The idea of the shelves is that he can keep things here permanently and just fold tables up and down as he pleases. I cannot believe that we've created created like three different areas in this 200 square foot apartment. He went from one dining table to three. Blows my mind, blows my mind.
Now we are gonna bring in the bed. The black version of this bed was out of stock at Ikea, so we're innovative, we're creative. We had Graham spray it the same color as this wall. Brilliant, I know. And the shoe cabinet, so it all ties together in this beautiful charcoal color. The awesome thing about this bed is that it has storage. So we got rid of Austin's shelf. He had a few baskets in there. That way, everything can go underneath his bed. So I'm kind of like, what does he have left? Because he got rid of everything, a true minimalist. But this is how we're bringing in tons of storage to this space. So usually you want to place a rug down horizontally. Sometimes in a small space that's just not possible and it actually looks funny, especially when all your furniture is creating like vertical lines. So in this case, we are putting the rug down vertically. It really fills the space nicely and gives it that vintage industrial feel. This rug is from Rugs USA. I love this shop because they always have sales, such good prices on rugs, especially if you're looking for a larger size rug. Sometimes when you're working with an industrial style, it can feel quite cold with a lot of the metal accents. So I wanted to bring in some texture, which is why I'm using linen curtains. So I've washed the Brook linen bedding. It's time to up the cozy factor in here. I also have a linen duvet from Brook linen. I love that we're going with off cream in this space to really like bring in that industrial kind of like vintagey vibe. The linen is really gonna warm it up. To make this bed feel like a hotel bed, I am mixing two different tones. So for the sheets, I'm going with this oatmeal color. And then for the duvet, I'm just keeping it white. I'm folding the fitted sheet over the duvet so you get to see the two colors there. I'm adding in tons of pillows. These decorative ones are from Simons. They add in so much texture and pattern and color. We love Simons for budget-friendly cushions, FYI. I love how he can take these decorative cushions and put them against the wall if he wants to watch TV. I didn't want to block the window with a headboard and I feel like this kind of gives him the best of both worlds. He can sleep on this bed, but he can also use it as a lounge space as well. I am now hanging this beautiful textured art piece from HomeSense. I have been eyeing these because they just have so much texture, they bring in so much warmth, but we're still keeping within that industrial color scheme of blacks, grays. Also, look at the frame. It matches all the other wood tones so perfectly. I'm obsessed. Next, we are doing a fantastic Pottery Barn light dupe. We found this lamp from Pottery Barn and it looked so good in the mood board, but when we went to purchase it, we realized it was $600 on sale. And we were like, no way. So Alana, the thrifty queen that she is, found basically the exact same light on Facebook Marketplace for under $100. So we are just spray painting the top of it copper so it looks exactly like the Pottery Barn one. Okay, ready guys? Let's do it. Oh, hi pigeons. Whoa! Sorry. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Watch for the fumes, people. Okay, that looks super good. One more little spritz. We're gonna let that dry. You still find me here 10 hours later spray painting it. Yay, okay. Ready to head upstairs? You could also go in with Rub and Buff, which is basically like a metallic wax. And this makes a lot of metals or woods look aged and more like antique -y. For now, we're just using the spray paint, but Rub and Buff also works really well. Also, like, what a dupe. What a dupe. This light retails for $600. We duped the heck out of it. Really glad we asked Austin to keep this piece. This is the only thing he kept out of all of his stuff, actually. And I'm really glad he did because it really goes with the style. It's extra storage. And I feel like it really completes the room, actually. We are moving on to the entryway, hanging this cute little hook for coats. Austin actually didn't have anywhere to hang coats before. So a simple hook like this is going to fix that. We're now hanging that beautiful Beauclair mirror. What a difference it makes hanging a mirror in a small, dark space like this. Suddenly brightens it up and it's like the first thing you see when you walk in. I've added a lot of mirrors into this small space because floor mirrors, wall mirrors, any kind of mirror is always gonna bounce off light. Even if you don't have a ton of light, it's gonna bounce off the light that is in the space and just make it feel a lot more open and bright. I'm adding this lamp, which we found from HomeSense. 
very industrial, literally industrial pipes, <laughs> and is a little extra light for this space. I love how the copper detail that we added to the handles perfectly matches back to that copper light we DIY'd too. Now it's time for those finishing touches. We are adding in some books to the nightstand slash AC unit, because remember guys, this is also a unit that's covering the AC. Genius, I will not stop saying this. An amber candle for some ambiance. We're adding some art prints. Some pompous grass on the ground. Of course, we are adding in Austin's sewing machine. Now we can always have it out and ready to use. I'm also steaming the bed to make it look extra crisp. <laughs> and I think this little mirror here is like a nice surprise when you walk into the space. This cute little hat, or as we refer to it on set, a uh, little chapeau. <laughs> You can totally turn function into decor by hanging things on the wall in a small space. I would encourage it. And finally, a rug in the entryway. This was such a fun makeover to do. It really pushed us to think outside the box and I can't wait to see what Austin thinks. Let's bring them in. Come on in, just look down. Okay, looking down. Are you ready? Yes. <laughs> So. Okay, I want you to just walk me through what your space looked like before. Um, it was just like a bunch of mix match furniture. One table. One table, couple yeah. Couple chairs. Didn't feel like home. Pretty like what a straight guy would have, so I feel like ashamed. <laughs> <laughs> okay, one, two, three. <gasps> wow. Holy shit. Holy shit. Holy crap. Oh, you matched today. Look at you. Wow. <laughs> this oh my is God. so good. Oh my God, the chest looks so good there too. Uh-huh. I'm in actually like in shock. You may remember you had an air conditioner here. Uh -huh. We made this custom cover for your air conditioner wow. that also wow. acts as a side table. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh, <gasps> wow. oh my God, the mirror. Yeah. Look at that. You should sit at your new table. You like it? <laughs> I love it. I feel like I'm in someone else's apartment, but at the same time, I know it's mine. <laughs> I love that. Yay! Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thanks again to Brooklinen for sponsoring this video. Click the link in my description box to get 20% off Brooklinen items for their birthday sale running until May 4th. And as always, I will see you guys next time. Bye. Woo!